Okay, so let's start off with Mocasoft. 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 Mocasoft TM5250. As I mentioned in my earlier video, uh, this has long been a favourite of mine. Despite the fact that it really hasn't changed very much over years and years and years, it just does exactly what you want it to do. So, as they say on their website, um, it supports all the various screen sizes, SSL, um, it has hot spotting. It just has a really nice uh, look and feel when I use Microsoft. And prior to recently switching to IBM I ACS in the last year, this was really my uh, 5250 emulation client of choice for maybe at least 10 years. So let's go and download it. I have got a license for this, so I've deliberately uninstalled my license version so I can show you exactly what you would have while installing it. So let's just go and download it. It has a trial for 30 days. I could try and do all this in real time because I like doing it that way. So there's the installer. It's running. Let's run the install and see what happens. Welcome to TN5250 for Windows 7, 8 and 10. I think it used to say for Windows Vista. <laughs> that, shows, that shows how old this thing is. So I'm going to accept the terms. Um, it's a 32-bit emulator. Yeah, Microsoft TN5250 for Vista. Oh, those were the days. Let's install it and see what happens. Are you sure you want to install? Yes, I do. And it's done. That's pretty easy, right? So let's launch it. Um, I'm going to leave it in shareware mode. So for your first 30-day trial, uh, if you want to go down this route, um, you get this annoying sort of bug now thing um, where you can buy it or register it. When you click register, you just paste in your key. Uh, when you buy it, they email you uh, a text file which has a key that you paste in. But I'm just going to continue in trial mode. Okay, just to make this video clearer, I'm going to go full screen with this bad boy. Um, now, what are we looking at? A gloriously horrible black screen of nothingness. It's a pit. You can see down here little red letters at the bottom. It says offline. So the first thing we need to do is uh, create a connection to a machine. Now, um, I'm going to connect... Oh, missing session data. Use menu, file, edit new session. Okay, so when we have our edit session, we're going to tell it where we're going to connect to. I'm going to use good old-fashioned pub 400. This is just the name. It asks for the AS400 IP address. <laughs> Again, it's showing its age. It's the IBM I server um, IP address or DNS name. So because we're connecting over the internet to pub 400, their DNS name is pub400.rzkh.de. Now, the port number is important, obviously. Um, I happen to know that pub400 uses port 23 for its uh, 5250 connections, but wherever you're working, the ports probably change. I know certainly for some of my clients, I have to use specific ports. Likewise, using SSL or not is up to you, depending on your connection. Just for this example, I won't. Um, I love the fact that Microsoft defaults to 27132 so we get that bigger screen real estate 27 lines and 132 characters wide as opposed to the old-fashioned 1980s 24 lines by 80s wide um, why anyone would continue designing screens in that narrow postage stamp format is beyond me we can optionally enter a, a device name i'm going to leave that to default so it'll pick up qpa dev 123 um, Enter username and password in here. I would normally do this, enter it in so that it would auto log me on. And then when I change my password, Microsoft comes up and asks me to store the new password. It stores it buried, encrypted somewhere down there. It's just never been a problem. And of course, you've got these pretty obvious things here. Exit on session termination, whether you want to confirm exit. Um, send a keep alive. It can just ping a little signal every so often just to make sure that, that connection is still up and running. Um, and connect to this. AS400 on program start. Come on, Microsoft, update your software, you lazy dingbats. Anyway, let's apply it and connect. Bearing in mind that connections to the German machine can be quite slow from here. Oh, saying that, what was that? Subsecond? And here we are. This is a, a sign on screen to Pub400 in Germany from West Coast USA to Germany. Let me sign on if I can remember my password. And there we have it. Microsoft, it does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, what I like about this software 
is the font scaling look. It maintains that 27132 shape and size of whatever you're using. It font scales really nicely. It just always fills up the window. I like the font they use as well. It's got a nice kind of just lined up uh, font look. One of the first things that I always do in Microsoft is changing the background screen colors. Um, you can customize all kinds of things in here. You can change the toolbar at the top to add different icons. You can change your keyboard layout depending on what keyboards you're running. And you can change all your colors and all that stuff as well. So one of the things, all, all the fonts. So what I tend to do is I'm not a fan of green on black. Ironically, I prefer to have it um, dark text on a white background. I know the current trend is dark screens, but that's just not how I like it. So this is quite an, a neat way of doing it within Microsoft. As you can come in, you can select your background color and say, right, I want it to be white. And then you can, then all really you've got to change is whatever was white. You don't want white on white, right? Pick a color like black and apply it. And you can see straight away the screen has changed. But whoa, that green text that we were looking at is awful, right? So again, I just go back into the options go to colors and I change green to something that I want to look at on the screen uh, how about um, like a dark shade of gray so this is how I like to use the box so I can sign on and run commands and do things and see it all in this screen layout um, I, the only other thing that it allows in Microsoft is you can assign a printer so you can have a virtual printer set up it doesn't have any um, integrated IFS uploading and download. Hey, this stuff was written long before the IFS was even around back in the IFS days. Um, but as you can see, it's just fast. It's nice. It works. It gets a big thumbs up from me. Um, and it's still one of my preferred emulators. Right. So that is Microsoft Telnet 5250. $30 for a lifetime license. Kind of a bargain if you just want a neat little uh, emulator. Um, Ooh, I'd really have to tweak my color schemes. So now that I've done that, look, that's awful. In fact, while I'm talking about changing colors, I'm not going to. Let's put everything back to where it was. And then um, that way we can compare all of the different applications to the, the, same, the same way. Every single emulator that I download, I'll do the exact same thing with and they'll all look the same to you guys. So there's our screen with that. We can connect and disconnect off the toolbar or off the menu. So if I want to disconnect, I'm now disconnected from that system. What else is there to say about this? Not very much. It has nice copy, pasting and texting. Um, the license, this is where I was talking about. You, put, you, you copy and paste in your license key when and if you buy it. Uh, after 30 days, it will just stop working. So probably the best premium one. Shh, don't tell anyone my favorite I always tell the kids you're all my favorite all these emulators are my favorite but this is really my favorite I don't know why I just like it uh, anyway so that's it Microsoft apart from the fact that it's a little bit outdated gets a big thumbs up this is version 3.6